Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Anke Mulman. Our website is CWOWI and it stands for Church Without Walls International. We are part of a worldwide network of house churches. You can go to our website, find a lot of information about that. But today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And I hope to answer questions you might have about baptism with the Holy Spirit and about speaking in tongues. If you haven't heard my, free, my previous video, I encourage you to go there because I laid a foundation over there. So it's poor, it, that is important today. I I build upon it. Last, just a, a small thing, uh, what, what I mentioned last week, I, we established from Luke 5, 37, 38, um, that our spirit, that the Lord says, no one puts new wine into new into an old wineskin, or the new wine will burst the wineskin and it will be spilled, but new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. So we establish that our spirit is the wineskin, and the wine, of course, is the Holy Spirit. When you are born again, your new wineskin, so to speak, is new. You are, you are a new creation. It is made new by the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now you are a new creation and now you are able to receive the new wine. And it will not be spilled. You will not die, whatever, but you can hold because your spirit is made from God. It's made by the Holy Spirit. So when we talk about the baptism with the Holy Spirit, we have to know and to understand that the Holy Spirit was poured out 2,000 years ago at the day of Pentecost. You probably know that in Acts chapter 2. And it says that the disciples they were baptized with the Holy Spirit as Jesus has promised to them in John 14 it's not be baptized in the Holy Spirit you are baptized in water meaning you are dumped into you 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 are in that water so you push the water away from you but you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit no then you would push the Holy Spirit away from you no you are baptized with the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit and it fills you up and then from there on it, it will affect your body and it will affect uh, your mind. It goes outward soul and body. And soul means you start, you start. You can start speaking in tongues, you can stop it. And the body means that you have to speak, uh, speak it out, open your mouth, use your tongue. And the words that come bubbling up from inside, from your spirit, you have to make the decision to speak it out and to start speaking in tongues. And you have to know that speaking in tongues is a language. So you can stop it, you can start it anytime you want, like you do with your mother language. Uh, you can speak it loudly or softly or slow or fast or whatever. You can give every nuances to it. You can sing in the spirit, use your voice to sing with those words that are in your spirit. It's because it's a language and it's important to know that it's in your spirit, but you have to start speaking. Because Acts 2.4 says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Spirit is giving the words, you feel the words bubbling up from the inside and notice that they began to speak and they opened their mouth. And then in Acts 2, then Peter explains what had happened to them because they thought they were drunk, they were speaking in, in a language they didn't know, they'd never heard, you know, and maybe the, uh, maybe, uh, the, the, um, the new wine had also influence, was also influencing their body, that they were like weak in their knees or whatever. Maybe you have experienced that when the Lord uh, fills you up again or, or comes over you, you know, that your body is hard for your body to, uh, yeah, to, to how do you say that, your, your knees start to be uh, weak or sometimes you can even fall under the power of the Holy Spirit and that, is, that can be genuine, of course. So they expected or they suspected they, they were drunk and then Peter explains in verse, chapter 2, verse 14, where is chapter 2, 14? So Peter stood up and said, no, those are not drunk, as you suppose, because it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then he says, it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy, young men shall see visions, old men dreams, on my maid servants and on my maid um, servants, I will pour out my spirit, and so on, and so on. So he explains what is happening and he talks about the Lord, how they crucified him, but how that he was raised again. And then, well, they were cut to the heart, all those people, more than 2,000 or almost 3,000 people actually. And they said, man, what shall we do? And Peter said to them in verse 38, repent. 
And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, is meaning in water, and you shall, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as, as the Lord God will call. So it was not only for them, for, for their children, for everyone, everyone else, you know, everyone. And it was for all. And then later it says where like uh, that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000. And Peter says it's for you all, for all of you. Wow, that is amazing. So <clears throat> let's see what else. Oh yeah, question. Do you have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come over you? Because some teach that you have to wait, so they start waiting and tarrying in the presence of the Lord. Maybe that's an old-fashioned word, but waiting till the Holy Spirit comes over them. But you have to understand that the Holy Spirit is already here. He was poured out 2,000 years ago, and now it's up to us to receive the Holy Spirit, like it is with the baptism in water. And the Lord says you have to be baptized in water. The water is already there, so you just find water yourself and you can be baptized. So when you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was, baptized, was poured out, and it's a matter of you to receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, we can read about it. There you find the evangelist Philip. He preached in Samaria, and it says many people believed Philip, and they were baptized in water. And then the apostles in Jerusalem heard what happened in Samaria, that they received the word of God. So they sent Peter and John to them, and it says, when they had come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. In verse 17, it says, and they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So sometimes it's easier to receive when there is that touch, you know, someone touches you, that point of, uh, point of contact can be easier for some people to receive the Holy Spirit. So yeah, they received the Holy Spirit. And some believe that the baptism with the Holy Spirit was for the only the only for the early church and for the apostles so they were able to start the church but it's not for now anymore well we read x2 38 39 right and it's not it's the promises to you to your children to all who are afar off and then mark 16 17 the lord says these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues do you believe in his name? Then you will speak with new tongues. And you have to look not only to the word, but look what is God doing today. Are people still baptized with the Holy Spirit? Yes, they are. People who are born again and they didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. They are baptized with the Holy Spirit and speak with tongues. And then they wonder, what is this? And someone can explain them. So yeah, people are still baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit and they still do speak in tongues. And then there's the question, do you have to speak in tongues when you're baptized? Many people probably say, well, I am baptized because they prayed for me, but I do not speak with tongues. Oftentimes, it's because we do not understand that we have to open up our mouth and we have to start speaking. And that is a bit scary because you have to trust that the Holy Spirit is there and that the words that come bubbling up or sounds maybe or syllabus that you have to understand. You have to trust that it is God, it is the Holy Spirit, and you have to start speaking them out. And as it is with the language, as it is with, maybe you learn another language, at first you only learn, uh, speak out a couple of words like hello, or how are you, or thank you. But the more you learn, the more you become familiar, the more you can speak. It's a little bit like that with the Holy Spirit, because it's a language. So you just be firm enough and have the boldness and the confidence and the trust that it is the Holy Spirit. And so you have to start speaking it out. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, um, yes, in Acts 10, I want to read that with you. We can read about Cornelius. He was a Roman centurion, a Gentile. Till then, the church, early church was only Jew. Um, he called his family and friends to listen to what Peter had to say. And then in verse 44, it says, While Peter was still speaking... The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And the Jews who believed were astonished because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is the speaking in tongues. They didn't know. They opened their heart. They listened to the word. Their heart was open, a new wineskin. And, and they were baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke with tongues. So Im immediately they happened like one after the other. And that is a good thing. That doesn't happen often. Most of the time people are first born again and then they hear about the baptism with the Holy Spirit and they start 
They want it. They, they have a longing to be baptized, to have more of the Lord, to be filled and, and receive that power. But the less time there is between the new wine skin and the new wine, the better it is. The less wrong teaching you will have, the better it is. So can we all speak in tongues? Oh, I forgot to say this. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 5. Paul says, I wish that you all spoke with tongues. There were many people in the Corinthian church. He says, I wish you all would speak with tongues. Uh, then some people say, yeah, but doesn't the Bible say here in 1 Corinthians 12, where is it, that not everyone speaks in tongues? Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Because, but you have to understand, verse 28, it says, God has appointed these in the church. And now it's not speaking about spiritual gifts, but it's speaking about ministry gifts. It's talking about apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healings, helps, administration, and variety of tongues. And then he says, are all apostles and prophets and working of miracles? Well, the answer is obvious. Not everyone is an apostle. Do all have gifts of healings? No. Do all speak with tongues and do all interpret? And then you probably see, not all speak in tongues. But he's not talking about the gift of tongues that everyone, every Christian, born again Christian can have. Your personal tongues. But he's talking about a ministry gift in the church, which is for other people. And I've seen uh, one person operating in that gift and that those those tongues go deep into a person's spirit. And, and what, what happens only the Lord knows and that person maybe knows later on. But it is a ministry gift. That's not for everyone. But the, when Paul says everyone can speak in tongues and what I uh, read to you about tongues, you know, all who believe will speak in new tongues. That is a tongue that you can have for your own benefit, I would say, what the Lord will give you. Okay, I hope that is clear. Um, wow, in Acts 19, Paul was in, Eph in Ephesus and he found there some disciples and he asked them if they, they received the Holy Spirit since they believed. And he said, well, we didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. Paul explains it to them. They were baptized in water. He lays hands on them. And then it says the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So you have to open up your mouth, right? It says here in, where is it? Does the Holy Spirit give us, um, when we speak, oh, I don't, I had it scripture somewhere, that when we pray uh, for, for the Holy Spirit, he doesn't give us anything from the devil. Oh, there it is, Luke 11, Luke 11, go there. Luke 11, verse 9. Because some things, okay, but how do I know that it is the Lord, it, it's the Holy Spirit, tongues are from God, is it not from myself, or maybe from the devil? And many people are afraid that they speak out words from the devil. And here it says, uh, the Lord says, I say to you, ask, it will be given, seek, you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you, and so on, and so on. And then it says, if, uh, if someone asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion or from bread? Will he give him a stone? No, of course not. Not even the good father will do that. Will he offer him a scorpion? You know, a scorpion is actually a type of something demonic. If then you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So when you ask it, ask the Father to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, that you want the Holy Spirit, you have, have to be confident that he will give you the Holy Spirit. And the words that come up bubbling is not from the devil, but those are those words are from the Holy Spirit. So you have to ask right and how do you receive the holy spirit you can receive it just by yourself you can receive it like my husband he was baptized with the holy spirit while he was driving in his car he had to, he was praying for it and then people laid hands on him never nothing happened but then when he was some day after that he was in his car on a small dike in the Netherlands, in my car actually. Okay, then the Holy Spirit came over him and it started bubbling up and he spoke it out and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So yeah, that can happen. People can lay hands on you. You can receive the Holy Spirit just by yourself. Just open up and say, Father, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, that can happen too. Like uh, lay hands like in Acts 8 and 19. And uh, no one laying hands on you like in, in Acts 2 at the day of Pentecost. No one was laying hands on them. Or at Cornelius' house, no one was laying hands on them. Then why tongues? I will go do that fast. Uh, why tongues? Romans 8, 27, the Amplified Bible says. 
Romans 8, 27, that we do not know what to pray. Let's go there. Romans 8, 26. <clears throat> the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So what is that weakness that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness? It's not a physical weakness. The weakness is that we don't know what to pray. And maybe you sometimes feel that you have to, uh, that you want to pray for your family or for a friend or whatever. And then you pray out what you know in the natural and then you are done because you don't know what's going on in their lives. So you need help. You need the Holy Spirit to help pray the right things. And it says here, the Holy Spirit searches uh, the heart. He knows what the mind of the Spirit, he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the weakness is we don't know the will of God in every situation. We don't know what to pray. Why? Because we are human, we have limited knowledge, and the Father knows everything. But he does have a problem. He needs us to invite him in the lives of other people, because we are, are, have been given the, the authority here on the earth, and the authority on, in, on our own lives, right? So we have to invite him, because he is not like a burglar who just breaks in. No, he wants to be invited in a situation or in a person's life but we don't know what to pray. So the solution was he had to find a way that we can tap into his unlimited knowledge. So he gave us a language we haven't learned because the uh, tongues is a language you have not learned. And he fills those words, because words are like containers, with his will, with his knowledge. Uh, from the inside, it comes here in our spirit, from heaven, in our spirit, he fills those words with his knowledge. We speak them out, and by doing so, we invite him to do what he wants to do, to invite uh, him to do his will. So that's what Jesus prayed, that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we ask according to his will. And 1 John 5, 14 and 15 said that we know when we uh, ask according to his will, we know that he hears us and we know that we have what we asked for. So why tongues? The most important reason why tongues is for effective prayer. That his will is will be done on earth, will be done in the people's lives. And oftentimes you don't know for who you are praying. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes the Lord will let you know for who you are praying. But you speak out those the, the will of God. But also in 1 Corinthians 14 2, it says when you speak in tongues, you speak mystery. And the word mystery is in, indeed something that you don't know, something that is hidden. Amplified Bible says secret truth and hidden things. And it, it does say in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, that when I go there, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, it says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, right? So there are no tongues to the devil, you speak to God. No one understands him in the spirit, you speak mysteries. You, that's the Greek word, mysterion, secret information, but the things that are hidden until revealed. So, and then it says, uh, he who speaks, also in verse 4, he who speaks in the tongue edifies himself. And the Paul says, I wish that you all spoke with tongues. So we speak the wisdom of God, hidden mysteries in God. We edify ourselves. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Paul said that he prayed more in tongues than the Corinthians. That is probably how he received the revelation from the Father. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Paul says in the first Corinthians 14, verse 13 till 15, uh, that you can also ask for those tongues to be uh, interpreted so that your mind is also fruitful. Because when you speak in tongues, you can think about other things. It's something from in your spirit. But you can ask for the, for the tongues to be interpreted. Sometimes the Father will do that. He will give you wisdom. For instance, when you are praying about a certain situation or wisdom, you don't know what to do. And you say, well, Father, I want to pray in tongues. And I ask you to reveal it, to, to give me the interpretation that I know with my mind what to do. And he, he will do that. Okay, that you may pray that you can interpret your tongues. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Maybe you have a lot of more questions. You can always email me. Go to cwowi.eu. See you next time. Bye-bye.